Good morning. Welcome to Glimpses of Grace and Glory. This is Thursday morning, July the 1st. Can you believe it? It's already July. And uh, we want to just take up a little thought here today as we continue. Uh, God directed, I believe, to this thought. My wife and I were listening to a TV ministry. We've been watching several pastors and some excellent interviews. But this man has been in teaching the Bible for years and years and years. He has to be in his high 80s. And uh, after they prayed, and we were kind of praying along with them, uh, he uh, was asked some Bible questions people sent him in. And one man said, I've been told about this eternal security, and then once you're saved, you're saved eternally. Is that true? And this man answered and said, well, he said, it's like riding a bicycle. You have to stay on the bicycle to stay on the road. It's day by day by day. You can't be saved 20 years ago and think you're still saved. And I'm not here to down anybody, but I will call out the Word of God because that is totally unscriptural. And I was really shocked that this man said that. I was listening and I had some respect, but I thought that is, I can't believe at your age that you're saying that you're not eternally saved, that it's only you're saved for a day and you have to be saved day by day by day. That's not what I read in the Bible. So let's, let's take up several scriptures today because sometimes you can take a scripture out of context and it'll seem uh, a, a, like a little bit challenging to the thought of eternal security, such as Colossians 1. Uh, we'll read 21 down to 23. He says, You were his enemies, Paul said, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Now Paul's talking to Gentiles, to the Colossians. Yet now he has reconciled, that has brought you back to himself, has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. That physical death took down the wall of partition and it, where Gentiles were no longer separated, brought back to Jesus Christ. He says it brought you uh, to himself, brought you to himself, reconciled you to himself. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Holy, blameless, without a single fault in Jesus Christ. Holy, set apart totally for God. Blameless, there is no sin recorded against you and not one single fault is recorded. And But the next verse in King James says, if you continue in the faith, but in the NLT it says, but you must continue to believe the truth and stand firmly in it. See there, if you don't continue, then you lose all that. That's not what it's saying. You need to continue. It didn't say do anything. It said you need to continue to believe. You know why? Because just as we talked about in the book of Galatians, there's always the devil trying to pull us back into self-effort, into human effort. And, and Paul says that's when you fall from grace and you're under the curse. It doesn't mean you're lost. If you were saved and you went back to the law, it means you're under the curse and the law demands punishment and the punishment's death. So if you want all the punishment for every sin, if you want to go back under that system, then the law... Every time you break the law, you can look to have some kind of punishment come forth. And remember, death is the punishment for sin. But let's look at a other, couple other scriptures because there are many. In fact, you know that Noah was, was an example. You know, uh, Noah and his family, it's actually a picture of the rapture. Noah and his family were taken into the ark, which was sealed with uh, the word pitch is not used this way anywhere else. It was sealed with atonement. It was actually a, a red tree resin, and it represented the blood. They were sealed by the blood. They were taken into, uh, or uh, atoned or covered in the blood, and then they were sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Lord sealed the door, and they were kept safe until the indignation was overpassed, and they came back. It's kind of like the church being taken up and protected while the earth is destroyed and then brought back down, kind of like the church with Jesus. But there, there was nothing they could do to get out of that ark. When, when they were sealed, they were sealed. And we're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. But look at a couple more scriptures, John 10, 26, or 27 down through uh, 29. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So when you can recognize Jesus' voice, it's because he's in you. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. When Jesus says never, I think he's probably serious about it. I don't think you'll ever find Jesus lying. In fact, I know you won't because it's impossible for him to lie. When he says never, he didn't give any, any uh, excuses. He just said you will never perish. 
I give you eternal life and you will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. That includes you. You can't snatch yourself. You think you can pull your hand out of God's? It's like a little kid, you're crossing the street. Say, well, my grandchild pulled away from me and got hit by a car. You know, somebody would say to you, your grandchild, a three-year-old pulled away from you? That's pretty sad. No, you had to let go. We cannot pull away from God. Not a billion people could pull away from God. He says, no one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. Because we're in his hand. We're held by him. We're not holding on to God. He's holding on to us. He loves us and he holds us. And John 5, 24 really clenches this. I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. Not will have. Maybe they'll have. Hope they'll have. When we believe that Jesus is God, that we have sent from the Father, that he is the Savior of the world, and we trust in him. He says, when we believe, that is, put our trust in him, not just believe historically that, you know, there was this guy, Jesus, we have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins. There's that word never again. Now, how often does it happen if it says never? If Jesus says never, then how often will it happen? Never means never. It will never, you will never be condemned for your sins, but they have already passed from death into life. So we've already passed from spiritual death, from darkness, into eternal life. We have eternal life abiding in us because Jesus is eternal life and he's come into us and he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There's that word never again. You will never come into condemnation. Let's rest in this, brothers and sisters. Let's see that we need to enter into the Sabbath rest, that Jesus already did it all. We've received him. We're saved eternally. There's nothing for us to do. We do want to continue to believe don't be moved away from the hope. Don't start letting some uh, false teacher tell you that, no, you can lose your salvation. No, you need to continue to believe. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ.